Uh, what's up everybody? Been a while since I made a video because I've been helping out my mom with some uh, family things for a little while now. And uh, so yeah, and there's no internet here, or at least there wasn't. So I've been offline until recently. But as I'm about to demonstrate, I've got a connection now, as I've had to concoct somewhat of a novel approach to getting around that lack of internet service here. And I thought I'd document my setup for all those who'd rather not pay an arm and a leg, you know, for Verizon or Comcast to uh, give it to them in the wallet every month. So uh, first off, uh, what we have here is the basic setup, uh, starting with the antenna. So this is a 24 dBi parabolic grid dish antenna made by TP-Link. Uh, I actually bought this about eight years ago. For my dad because he lived next to a Burger King <laughs> with free Wi-Fi and why not take advantage of it and uh, you know of course him being the cheapskate he is he didn't want to pay for internet so I bought this antenna I explained to him listen there's something you can do so I bought this antenna and um, a different model alpha adapter which uh, I'll go into more detail about in a minute or so and that pulled that free Burger King Wi-Fi into my dad's old laptop uh, he has since moved to South Carolina, so this went into storage until recently, which is why it's a bit weathered like this. If you look along the tripod area here, there's a bit of rust and tarnish in that, but um, that's not really a big deal. So um, I covered it in aluminum foil like this, the way you're seeing here, all of this aluminum foil, because um, being indoors, it's not gonna, the wind's not going to blow it off. Outdoors, I wouldn't do this kind of thing because the weather would destroy it. But uh, being indoors, having to go through a layer of wood and drywall and whatnot, it helps to add just a little more oomph to the overall gain. And so that's what I did with the aluminum foil. Uh, this here is a TrendNet low-loss N-type connector. Uh, N-type connector to, uh, I believe it's male, to RP-SMA, which means uh, reverse polarity. Uh, this is an SMA connector. You're going to want to make sure that you have a low-loss cable specifically because when you're drawing in Wi-Fi at such a long range you really don't want your wire bleeding out all of your signal um, yeah so moving on I've been using alpha adapters since around 2009 ish I want to say and uh, I also bought one of these for my dad some years ago for his setup as I mentioned previously just moments ago uh, I think it was the NEH model I'm not sure I'd have to look it up, and I'm not going to do that now. Uh, it was just a much older model than this model. That's all I have to say. It's, it was just older than this, and this one is one of the newer ones, actually, that isn't dual band. Um, I still have, I actually, I still have my old one, which is a BG protocol only. But I decided to buy this newer one because that one was pretty worn. And like I said, it wasn't quite up to its former glory. It's, it's just, this one is the NHA. And so it 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 also uh, works on end protocol, which is important. It's not as good as you know, dual band. You know what I mean? But that's fine. It's, it's it supports end protocol, two point four gigahertz. Um, so for my purposes, that's that's quite all right that it's not dual band. Um, I'm not going to go into all the specs here. You can look that up on Alpha's website or Amazon, where I purchased this unit. And uh, get all the details you want. So I apologize for all of those who are looking for that because I'm just I'm not going to go into that. It's not really necessary for the purpose of this video. Uh, continuing on with the setup, uh, what I have here is an old junky 2007 laptop, Dell laptop. I mean, I say junky, but it, it, in its prime, it, it was definitely uh, it, it was a workhorse. So in its day, but now it's just it's not really good for much. Uh, it has a hard time even streaming HD video. Like, if you use this to go onto um, YouTube and, and watch some HD video, like, you can't actually put it even in 720p without it chopping up and getting all glitchy. So, I decided that I'm just going to repurpose it into a wireless router. That way, any device in the house can now connect wirelessly, which is which is great. I mean, I could just plug this this alpha adapter into my directly into my laptop. But uh, I wanted this to be a wireless setup so that everybody in the house could actually use it. And, you know, so I could use my phones. I have two of them. And I use them for various purposes. And it helps to have Wi-Fi. So, so there's multiple devices and I needed a wireless setup. So this is what I concocted here. 
Um, many people know this by now, on that note. But a uh, few people still don't know that Microsoft, starting with Windows 7, wrote in the option to enter a few command lines that enables your computer, your your machine, to uh, share a connection, either wireless, a uh, wireless connection, to share that wireless connection, I should say, or a wired connection. So if you're plugged into an Ethernet, but you're on a machine that has the ability to transmit, of course, it's not just gonna magically. You need a Wi-Fi card, but uh, yeah, if you can uh, wirelessly share that connection provided that you have a wireless you have both a wired connection and a wireless card so laptop for example if it's wired in you can share the wired signal or rebroadcast say if you're in a hotel or something like that or you're in some type of situation where like maybe a library or something where you have a co uh, uh, you're only allowed you have to pay per device or something like that some situation like that this is I think was the the idea behind programming this in I mean, it's a little more backstory than necessary, so moving on again. Um, since that was introduced uh, in Windows 7 way back when, uh, ever since then, Windows 8, 8.5, Windows 10, whatever they come out with after 10, uh, will also have this this uh, Wi-Fi feature, this uh, hotspot feature, I ought to say. Uh, and since that time, many independent programmers have created user interfaces to make it easier then you know typing in these these tedious command lines uh, here I'm using M hotspot it's a program a free program um, it's free to use but it is ad supported I, I ought to mention uh, not really necessary like I said if you want to type in command lines you can do that but I do like M hotspot there's a few of these things connectify is actually my favorite but you have to pay for it it used to be free at one time there was like a light version or something I think it's still there but they've restricted it to the point where it's like barely even usable. But uh, yeah, it adds a few bells and whistles, this M hotspot, programs like that. As far as functionality to the whole thing, it just gives you a little bit more, uh, a little more functionality so you can play around with settings and that over just typing in a bunch of command lines and not really being able to look at uh, clients or peers being connected or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to get miracles out of this thing, to sort of summarize here. I mean, I'm not going to make this a really long video. I just wanted to uh, sort of show, introduce the setup. But um, it works well enough, you know, for what it is, and for right now anyway. So essentially what's happening here, and for those who are, I mean, who are pretty savvy about these things, I don't really need to explain this, but for those who uh, are just kind of intrigued by what I'm doing here and maybe don't understand it as well, the laptop is essentially set up as a as a client so now any device that connects will more or less get the same speed as the machine directly plugged into the adapter uh, give or take a few megabits per second um, as I'll demonstrate if the adapter connected device is pulling in let's say like six or seven megabits per second like I'm not getting anything crazy here there's a supermarket uh, maybe about three football fields away which is uh, quite far and um, I mean we could be getting a little more speed than this um, with the current setup not it's, it's not really possible maybe with a little bit with some creative um, antenna positioning maybe you can get a little bit more than this but um, yeah so we're getting six or seven megabits here and this is uh, maybe not maybe people are not impressed by that but it's free essentially after cost of hardware and um, yeah the, the peer devices you can expect them to pull in about the same amount or slightly you probably get slightly less but you'll probably hit uh, a ceiling of you know more or less whatever you're getting on the adapter connected device so of course you're going to get some fluctuations as well due to uh, weather conditions you know or uh, sunspots, if any sunspots, that'll obviously wreck uh, any type of electronic devices. You just really no way to predict that. Although there may be an app, I don't know. But um, if the original host is being throttled, of course you're going to notice um, you're going to notice some uh, connectivity issues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, for a one-time eighty-dollar investment, which is what I what you're seeing here, uh, I can't complain. I'm not. I mean, I'm not complaining. I. I mean, obviously, I would love to have uh, South Korean internet speeds. <laughs> you know, it's like 
Uh, I think it's like 370 is like the minimum megabits per second is like the min- is is like uh, considered shit internet over there, which is crazy, you know, because you would expect the United States would have glorious everything. And uh, but of course, you know, those of us who live here know that we get screwed over, but that's beside the point. Um, yeah, so I'm not complaining about the connection. It's it's more or less free after cost of hardware. Um, not including the junker laptop. That's you know that was something that's just been sitting around for a while. I don't remember what I paid for it. I think I bought it used. Actually, it was like 200 bucks used. But you know, obviously, when something you believe is outlived its usefulness anyway, when you can breathe new life into it, I just consider that a plus. But uh, yeah, the whole thing more or less for the adapter, the um, the low loss wire, and the uh, and the antenna, all of that stuff came out to about 80 bucks, which is the antenna was like 50 bucks. It's I believe it still more or less goes for that price. That's what the price it was at the time when I purchased this, purchased it, and that was like 2010 or something like that. Um, with you know, so all in all, it ain't too bad considering that um, I used to pay Verizon 60 bucks a month for 10 megabits per second once upon a time ago. And, you know, of course, there was always hidden fees and, and you know, pulling out of the contract. That's uh, Eventually, I had to do because I moved. And, you know, and they charged me for 400 bucks and all. It was just crazy. And after that, it was like I just didn't want to go through that again. And uh, living in the city where I was living at that time, uh, there was just, like, Wi-Fi hotspots, free Wi-Fi hotspots everywhere. Laundromats, supermarkets, just, just like now. I mean, it's just libraries. And it just keeps expanding. And, I mean, that being still being the case, I figured where I am now, I could set up something like that. And it took a little time and some uh, disposable income. But now that I got it, uh, you know, this is what the setup is. And, uh, yeah, and it's a one-time payment. That's what's good about it. And I'm probably going to shell out, speaking of which, I'm probably going to shell out a few extra bucks at some point because I'd like to get a little more sophisticated with the setup. And uh, I know that with some extra hardware, I can pull in double the speed I am now with a lot less mess and, you know, a much more reliable way to um, spread the signal throughout the home, throughout this house. Uh, and at that time, perhaps I'll make an update to this video. I prob- I mean, I'd like to do that. I- things don't always, video-wise, <laughs> turn out the way I'd like. I mean, I have a whole queue of, of things I've been meaning to get to, and uh, eventually I will. I... I've- I would like to think, um, and I'll get to that too as well. You know, I'd like to make an update to this video with a more thorough walkthrough of everything entailed in in making it happen. Um, but yeah, until then, if you like this video, you know, if you if this video intrigued you and you liked it, please like the video. Um, if you have any comments or questions, leave them below, and I'll try to get back to you. Uh, with any like if you have any kind of like detailed questions assuming that this video doesn't get inundated with views and comments i will definitely uh get back to you so uh thanks for watching peace